All right, so today we're going to look at differential equations. It might be helpful to download and print out the PDF of the notes so that you can fill in as we go along versus trying to write it all down. Um, so if you want to do that, it would be a good time to pause and go ahead. So what is a differential equation? It is an equation containing a function and one or more of its derivatives. So all in that equation. Uh, the order of the differential equation is the order of the highest derivative that appears in the equation. So if you have the notes, you can fill in the parts that are missing. So what do we mean by this, though? What does this look like? Well, here are some examples. So these are all differential equations. They have a function and its derivative. Right? They have derivatives and they have functions. They have derivatives and they have functions. What is the order of each differential equation? Um, it might be worth it if, for you to pause or at some point after I do one to pause and see if you can do the rest. But let's go. So this first one right up here that I have the arrows at, the order is the highest order derivative. Right here, I have the first derivative. So this is what we call a first order differential equation. Um, moving on over here, this is a first derivative. This is a third derivative. This is the function itself, so that doesn't count. If I think about which is the biggest derivative in that equation, it would be a third. So this is a third order differential equation. Again, this would be a good time for you to try the next two, see if you can come up with the answer. Um, for this one, I have my function. I have a first degree and a second degree. So this is a second order differential equation. The biggest derivative in that equation is the second derivative. And then over here, you can use any sort of derivative notation. You can use the dy dx. You can also use y prime. Again, this is a first order. So this is a first order differential equation. Um, so one thing we can do, it, we're going to start with just giving you some potential solutions. And you have to check or show and prove that they are indeed solutions. Later on, we'll actually learn how to find solutions for differential equations. But right now, we're just going to give you the solution and you say, yes, it is, or a potential solution. So how do we do this? Well, we start by figuring out which equation is the differential equation, because I have two separate equations here. The differential equation is the one with the derivative, which is that one right there. So my differential equation, y prime plus 3x squared y is 6x squared. So now I want to show that the other one is a solution. So we are going to substitute expressions for y and y prime into my differential equation and then simplify until the right and the left sides are equivalent. So to do that, I know what y is, right? I have my y. y is 2 plus e to the negative x cubed. I need y prime. y prime is the derivative of y, so the 2 becomes a 0, and I have e to the negative x cubed times the derivative of negative x cubed. Remember, constant vigilance, as Matt I. Moody would say. So we need to do the chain rule. The derivative of negative x cubed is times negative 3x squared. So I've got the first part done. Now I'm going to substitute them in to my differential equation. So I take this equation right here, and instead of y prime, I will put in this expression, e to the negative x cubed times negative 3x squared. And then I have plus 3x squared. And instead of y right here, I'm going to put in this expression for y times 2 plus e to the negative x cubed. And when I'm all done, I should get 6x squared. So I have substituted. Now I need to simplify. So I'm going to do a little rewriting, and this here becomes negative 3x squared e to the negative x cubed, and I'm going to distribute, and I get plus 6x squared, and this is plus 3x squared e to the negative x cubed, and all of that should equal 6x squared. So now I have to see if these two sides of my equation are true, and I notice right here these are like terms. I have a negative 3x squared many e to the negative x cubed, and I have a 3x squared many e to the negative x cubed. And when I add those together, they make 0. 
I am left with 6x squared equals 6x squared. So it is true. That is a solution. y equals, what was my y equals? 2 plus e to the negative x cubed is a solution. All right, let's try another one. Again, if you feel like you understand what to do, you could try this yourself. So first, our job is which is the differential equation. This is my differential equation. So I'm going to substitute into that. And I already know what y is. I'm going to put that right in there. But what I need is I need something to replace dy dt. So I know that if y equals 100 plus c e to the negative t, then dy dt would be c e to the negative t times the derivative of negative t, which is going to be that negative. So now this is going to go right in there. So I do my replacements, and I get negative c e to the negative t equals 100 minus y, which is 100 plus c e to the negative t. And remember, parentheses, parentheses are important. Do not be lazy. Right, but that's what I'm doing. I'm subtracting all of y. So I am subtracting the 100, but I am also subtracting the c e to the negative t. And that should equal negative c e to the negative t. And again, 100 minus 100 is 0, and I get a correct equation. Negative c e to the negative t is negative c e to the negative t. That is an identity. It is always true. So my original equation is a solution. Okay. Now we're going to show that this is not a solution for the equation. So it's going to be something similar, but in the end, instead of coming up with a true statement, I will come up with an equation that is not true. So my two sides will not be the same. So again, here's my differential equation. This is what I will substitute into. And so I need, in this case, I need y, which is e to the 2x. I don't need dy dx. I need d squared y. But I actually need to find dy dx on my way. So that's going to be 2 e to the 2x. That's sort of my interim step to get to what I need, which is d squared y dx squared. And again, another chain rule, constant vigilance. Um, I'm going to multiply by another 2, and I get 4 e to the 2x. Now I do my substituting. So my d squared y dx squared gets replaced by 4 e to the 2x. And then I have my y, which is e to the 2x. So I have plus 4 e to the 2x equals 0. And unfortunately, when I add these together, I get 8 e to the 2x, which will never be 0. Therefore, y equals e to the 2x is not a solution. Because if I replace the second derivative with the second derivative of e to the 2x, and I replace y, I do not get a true equation. So we can have another kind where actually there are some values of k where this will be a solution. So for what non-zero values of k does y equal sine kt satisfy the differential equation? So again, I need y double prime in order to replace it. So my y is sine of kt d, or let's go, they're using y double prime, so I want my y prime notation. Derivative of sine of kt is cosine of kt times the derivative of kt, constant vigilance which is k. And then my y double prime is k. And then I have derivative of cosine, negative sine of kt, times the derivative of kt, which is another k, which is going to make a k squared in front. And so I have my pieces. Now I will substitute in. Again, this is going in there. And this is going in there. So I have negative k squared sine of kt plus 9 sine of kt equals 0. So I want to know what 
solutions for k will make this true. So I have sine of kt, I'm going to distribute that out, and I have 9 minus k squared equals 0. And this factors into 3 minus k, 3 plus k. So I have k is 3, k is negative 3, but my other possibility is that sine of kt equals 0. That happens when kt is 0, or pi, or 2 pi, or any multiple of pi, so n pi. And so when k is n pi over t, which is a little more complicated, those will also be solutions. All right, now, so for our last piece, we are going to give, we have a bunch here. And so this would be another opportunity for you to kind of see what you think you know and then check with when I go through. So if you wanted to pause and try these, it would be a good opportunity. Um, so we're trying to figure out which ones are solutions. So it really is a matching. On the left are my differential equations. And I want to know which of the ones on the right are possible solutions. So I really need, since some of my differential equations are first order and some are second order, I really want to know what are what is my first derivative for each and what's my second derivative. So if y is cosine of x, y prime would be negative sine of x, and y double prime would be um, negative cosine of x. And then I can just sort of stop and say, are there any of these equations on the right where that would be the solution? So y double prime, negative cosine of x, is that the same as y prime? No. So 1 is not a solution for a, is 1 a solution for b? So y prime, negative sine of x, is that negative y? No. So it's not a, it's not b. If I look at c, I'm pretty sure that sine and 1 over cosine, or that's not going to be true. What about d? So in that case, I'd have negative cosine of x is negative, and y was cosine of x. Yes, indeed. So 1 is a solution for d. And then let's check the last one right here. So if I try x squared times negative cosine of x minus 2 cosine of x, do I get 0? Mm, not for everything. So that one is also not a solution. So that's number 1 is a solution for d. All right, how about number 2? My y prime is negative sine, and it's a negative negative, so it's plus sine of x. Y double prime, when I take the derivative of sine of x, I get cosine of x. And now we're going to again check which ones of those might it work for, which ones might it not. All right, if I come up here to A is cosine of, oops, I made a mistake over here, didn't I? These all need to have a negative x in there because it's the inside has to be the same so y double prime is cosine of negative x oh I think that messes up my derivative as well so again y prime is going to be negative negative sine of negative x and then y double prime I'm going to have a negative cosine of negative x in this case, because the derivative of the inside. So I get cosine of negative x times the derivative of negative x. And again, so now y double prime is negative cosine of negative x, and is that the same as cosine of negative x? No, so it's not a. How about b? Does y prime equal the opposite of y? I got cosines and sines, so no. c is going to be a no. Let's see. Negative cosine of negative x, that's y double prime. Does that equal the opposite? Yes, so this is also D. Um, and then the last one, I'm pretty sure that is, again, not with the cosines and the sines. That is not going to be a solution. All right, let's try number three. So I get Y prime is 2X. Y double prime is 2. 
So y double prime equals y, 2 does not equal x squared. That is not true for a. Um, for b, y prime, which is 2x, does that equal the opposite of x squared? That indeed does not, at least not for all x. Um, for c, y prime, 2x is 1 over x squared. That is not true for all x, so no. y double prime is the same as negative y. That is not true. How about e? Let's see. x squared times 2 minus 2 times x squared equals 0. There it is. So 3 is a solution for e. All right. Let's try number 4. So y is e to the x plus e to the negative x. y prime is e to the x minus e to the negative x because of that chain rule. And y double prime is e to the x. And I'm going to have minus e to the negative x times negative 1. So I'm back to e to the negative x. So if we check number 1, or a, y double prime equals y, that is true. So 4 is a solution for a. Um, is y prime the opposite of y? And it is not, because I would have e to the x minus e to the negative x. Does that equal e to the x plus e to the negative x? No, it does not. Um, it's not going to be c. What about d? y double prime, is it the opposite of y? Well, we said it was y, so it's not going to be the opposite of y. And then... How about e? So I have x squared e to the x plus e to the negative x minus 2 e to the x plus e to the negative x. Does that equal 0? I don't think that equals 0 for all x. So that is also a. So that means that 4 is a. And finally, we're going to look at 5. So my y prime is 1 over 2 square root of 2x times the derivative of 2x. So that's 1 over square root of 2x. And then for derivative purposes, that's the same as 2x to the negative 1 half. My y double prime is uh, negative 1 half. 2x to the negative 3 halves times the derivative of 2x. So I'm going to get negative um, 1 over square root of 2x cubed. And let's see if, any, if this fits any of my derivatives. So is y double prime the same as y? That is not true. Is y prime the same as negative y? That is also not true. Is y prime the same as 1 over y? That one's looking a little promising. So y prime, is that the same as 1 over y? Yes, it is. So c is a solution for there. And I'm pretty sure that e is not a solution. So now you should be able to start on that homework which is on your syllabus, but is also right here.